Well, I, I would like to give them uh, kind of a, a more endearing name. You know, you call them a tid, but I, you know, we could make it a titty. <laughs> okay. Yeah? <laughs> like a titty so, bear. <laughs> so Foxconn is just a big giant titty. <laughs> Okay, quiet down. I think they're here. Yes, they are. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back to Talking Racine. So glad you could make it. We just barely got here ourselves. George Myers on my left, Mr. Jim Spotick, our producer extraordinaire on my right, and I'm Dr. Ken Jorgen, your host. And uh, we just have a little thing here that we're going to show you right off the top here. Uh, George is going to do a little whiteboard for us. And tax incremental districts. Tax yeah. incremental districts, tax incremental financing, and if you think you don't understand it now, hopefully you'll understand it better afterwards. I mean, he's, he's helped me a lot. I've always had questions like, what the heck are these things about? So why don't, we, uh, why don't we switch to George's presentation, and then a little discussion will ensue amongst us, and hopefully we'll answer some of the questions that arise in your mind at the same time. Okay, this is a video about tax incremental districts. Now within a tax incremental district, you do a thing called tax incremental financing. And I want to put both those things up there because TID and TIF are used almost interchangeably and they aren't really interchangeable. This is what it is and this is it's like going to a bank and you do banking. This, this is the name of the, the thing and this is what you do in it. Now it's come up in Racine because there's a new TID or there's a TID being uh, used, it's going to cost us a lot of money. How does it work with taxes, which is what we're mostly interested in right now? And we're going to start off with this square here. And that square represents the value of all the property in the city of Racine. It's about three billion dollars, something somewhere in that neighborhood. And that kind of can grow and it can shrink up depending on finances and stuff. When 2008 came along, it kind of shrunk down as property values fell and then it expanded back up uh, as, as the property values came back up. But the other thing that we're interested in is, is what's called the tax base. That's, that's the levy. These are all the taxes that these people pay. All right. This is generally about two or three percent of that. This, this isn't to scale, but this is smaller than that. And although this can grow, this can st this stays the same. The the um, the tax levy. And back about ten years ago, uh, Scott Walker came as governor and he froze that. So it uh, couldn't. It used to be um, cities could just tax some more if they wanted to, but this got frozen. But they made an exception now to the way you can increase that, and that is if there's new construction. And that's where the TIDs and the TIFs comes in. And down at uh, Long Lake, Michigan, there was a TID formed uh, about uh, 20 years ago. It was TID number nine, and that we could call the Johnson TID. And here's the way that worked. Johnson put up some really nice buildings, all right? is about twenty million dollars worth of buildings. Now that was new construction. So with new construction what happens is this levy can go up a little bit. And the way it works so that your taxes don't go up with it is the new construction would pay that part and we down here in the rest of the city paid this part down here. And so even though there was new construction and the levy limit went up, our taxes still stayed the same because that's all we paid. But enter a TID, a tax incremental district, and this is what happened down there. When a TID comes into effect, the new construction gets, ad gets added on there, but this is no longer paid by the people that own that new construction. That instead called tax incremental financing, that money stays in the TID. But unfortunately, 
This also stays there, so guess who pays that? We pay that. So, and that's the way that our taxes increase when a TID gets put into effect. Now, right now, that is costing the taxpayers, these buildings, cost the taxpayers about a half a million dollars a year. So over the 10-year, uh, 20-year period that's been in effect, we've paid close to $10 million for, these, for this building that's worth around $25 million. The question is, is, how is this getting used? What happens to that? That's, that's just uh, Festival Hall and you know, part of uh, the, the, uh, the hill down there that goes down behind uh, the Johnson Building, and it's also uh, the, um, the, plus it's Monument Square. So what's, what they're proposing now is a new building down here, which would be about twice as big as, Johnson's, as the Johnson Building. So with that new $50 million structure that they're talking about, guess what? This goes up again. And being this is in a TID, guess who pays those taxes, those new taxes? Again, we do. So now we're up to a million and a half dollars, and of course this is just more money into the TID. And that's basically the, the way the TID works. It's supposed, they will be touting this as it's not costing taxpayers any money, but it is, because it allows the city, because this, this tax base, this, this levy is, is allowed to go up by the amount these would be taxed, the new, new construction that we pay once and then they pay again. And that's how property in a TID gets double taxed. Now, this is just a very brief explanation of how TIDs work. I hope you understand that. If there's something you don't understand about it, for goodness sakes, uh, push one of those buttons down below this video and let us know, because we can redo this or we can even do another one. And there's another thing that I'd like to just mention about this. It gets in the field of economics more than, this is more in the field of finances, um, and that is this extra money here. You know, this, this extra million and a half dollars a year in taxes that's being taken out of our pocket, that is not our rent, our rent money or our mortgage money or the basic needs. This is, this is extra money that we could be spending otherwise that's being taken out of the economy. You know, the, the downtown businessmen think they like this, but a million and a half dollars a year in spending money is taken out of our, our pockets and being put into taxes instead of being spent at the local merchants downtown, because that's what that money, that's what this money is. That's extra money. So I don't think it's even good for the local economy, these, these TIDs. I think we can do just as well, if not better, without them. As a matter of fact, the state of uh, California has outlawed them. They got deep enough into debt with using them that they decided that's enough. They got rid of them. So again, if you have any questions, let us know. We'll be glad to hear your comments on it. But that's basically how TIDs work. It was a good job, George. You know, I, well, I, hope it, I hope it explains how they how these things work. Yeah, yeah it was kind of a down and dirty explanation. I'm sure there's a lot of technical things that you can oh, throw the, in the, there. But yeah, but we could spend the next hour and a half discussing TIDs because they get very complicated. But that's basically how they operate and how they they um, tax. Well, the bottom so, line is, I mean, I've always heard them say uh, this will not cause taxes to go up. No, and yet. They talk about uh, something called uh, captured value, which is more money coming into the city from the taxpayers. But somehow or another, it's not counted as taxes or it's... It's called capture. That, that money that uh, goes into the... Tit. Here, let's, let's pull this out over here real quickly. We just look at that board again. But the bottom line is here. that there's more money coming out of the taxpayers' pockets, That's right. right. When, when, when this... When this when, without the TID, and the Johnson Building were paying this little tax increment here, this little amount here. Yeah. That's that's all it was. Uh, in other words, they paid this tax, and we paid the bigger tax down here. When the TID goes in effect, this line gets eliminated, and we pay the tax now. Right. So, so that's, that's tax yeah. one. So that assessment is increased to the general population that's, and received. That's right. They pay the tax. We still the pay money that. that Johnson puts out goes into the slush yeah, fund, instead of, which we instead call... Instead of going here, it goes in, it goes there, and that's called capture. No, it's a, so a slush fund. Slush fund. <laughs> <or a slush laughs> <fund. laughs> Politicians call it capture. Well, it would have been taxed that they paid. 
but instead it goes into the tax in district it goes into the district right. and can only be spent in the district it cannot be spent on police and fire and streets and sidewalks it's a double tax the amount that they should have paid but didn't that we paid instead goes to police and fire streets and sidewalks that's what's over here this over here is just more money and wow how is it being used well right now it's being used to put another building up it's going to do the same thing and right. triple yeah. the double tax again right because this is all going to get double taxed. now you said it, it it goes back into the into the tid except that now they've changed the rules on these tids so that a new tid can borrow money from the old tid the money that was originally intended to stay in there can now go to a different tid that's that, right that's it, it can only go to another tid it's it still can't go to streets of fire and right and, it's got to stay within the yeah it, it, it can go to another tid and the way this particular tid this is tid number nine the way it's working is it's going into other tids that are distressed yeah and there's tids that aren't making money so we're going to keep this one going because this is a successful wealthy tid and so we're going to take and send in other tids, but it can't go. It can't go to the distressed people on the south side that had their street lights turned out. But it can go to a right. tid to. Uh, well, and that goes to specific uh, tids too. That money. Which which ones are? Jim, do you have that? Information? Okay. Uh, listen, there's. We we just. I want to kind of touch on how many tids the scene has. They've got. Uh, there's 17 active tids right now, with one on the verge of another tid 24 coming on. There's. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six tids that have been retired, meaning they've they they've met their uh, they've met their, well they, they, they closed they're done with them yeah, yeah. they're, they're they closed they're with them. so now they're up. paying taxes to the general fund and and um, but those were early tids Young Industrial Park Olson Industrial Park uh, the Gas Point uh, condos on the, on the lake area uh, downtown parking ramp. Those, but th you know, if you remember, those were early on. Those were tids that I think, you know, it, you know, we kind of laugh and we beat up tids a little bit, but they can be a, a successful. Uh, they can work and be successful. Racine when now. When you say has, successful, I'm assuming you mean to the benefit of the larger community. To the community. Yeah. After that tid is closed, that goes back to your general fund. It then reduces your taxes or general. It goes into the general fund, which would pay for streets and sidewalks and fire and police. But we've got 17 TIDs that are active. Now, when you talked about donor TIDs, TIDs, yeah. No, no. Let's play a little game with this, Jim. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going I'm to give it an. I'm going to give it a number, and Jim, because Jim's got a name, and it'll mean a lot more. All right. TID number nine. That's the what, that's the Johnson TID. How does what, what do they call it there? Is that Festival Park TID? Yeah, they call it the Johnson Building TID. Johnson or, Building TID. You know, okay. The, because that was yeah originally. Now, when this was set up, it, it also was a donor district for districts 10, 11, and 15. Now 10 is what? 10 is the Southside Industrial Park. If you go out there, that's the one where I think Jacobson was, and they redid it all. Okay. There's nobody nobody's in there. Well, that is distressed because they're not producing any. Income. It's just, it's just a flat yeah. land. Somebody's got to maintain land. that property, so and we're taking some money out of nine to cover it's that. We're going to take nine to keep the grass cut and that type of stuff, I guess. Eleven. Eleven is the West Racine West Boulevard to Grove Avenue, and that's where the old Piggly Wiggly was in West Racine. Okay. You know that that area there, and it encompasses a I don't know, maybe a block or big, maybe a little bit bigger. But then again, too, that was going to be redeveloped, and nothing ever happened there. So again, there's maintenance there now. And then fifteen. 15 is the former homeward bound block. It's on Martin Luther King. Originally, that was the um, well, it was the Danish Secord, Secord Mansion. Originally, yeah. that became the Danish Old People's Home, right. and it so, became homeward bound. Yeah. Right. So that that's a vacant lot. That is about a block by a block, and that's yeah. that's another uh, donor. So that's, that's, yeah, it's right. a donor tit. Now, right. here's the wait, deal. Wait, wait, wait. It's a recipient tit, isn't it? That's yeah. a recipient tit. Yeah. The donor tit is Ted Nine. Yeah. That's the, that's the Johnson Bill, and that's where it's going there. Now. Uh, that was when it was originally set up in 2012. They were going into the, these uh, other 10, 10, 11, and 15. Now, as of now, uh, 11 and 15 have recovered, so to speak. 10 is still distressed, but 17 and 21 are now distressed. Okay. And 17 is the Porter's building. It's in downtown 301 6th Street. That's the Porter's project right. and the buildings are gone. We all go by that. And, and it's, it's the mulch uh, storage facility. <laughs> right. And 21? 21 is 
uh, Lake Avenue. That's where the proposed uh, arena was. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah, the old that's gas it. company site. Yeah, okay. 233 like Lake Avenue. But I, I find it kind of interesting that Machinery Row, which is TID 18, yeah, there doesn't seem to be any mention of that uh, being addressed. I mean, you got to say there's some Oh, distress. that's a TID that, oh my <laughs> that's God. That's a TID that will keep giving. The second the redo or redevelopment take, take authority money. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's $2 million a year right there. But here the thing is, you know, I mean, I guess early on when you did Young Industrial Park, the Olson Industrial Park, um, a couple of the developments that were, you know, they were successful and they did actually produce a, a, a revenue and then it became uh, completed and then closed and given to the general tax. Those are good. But there are so many TIDs out here that are just not doing well. Well, I think they got fascinated with these TIDs. Once they had a couple that worked and they thought the TID itself was somehow magic. Exactly. You I put a TID exactly. in and boy, somewhere down the road right. we're going to see a lot of money. Well, well here's, here's another part to the TID. There is a requirement to the TID. It's called the but for uh, clause. And I smile because... What about buts one, two, and three? <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, it says, but for this TID, something won't happen. All right. Now, the Johnson TID is a bit silly. The Johnson was going to build up there. They did not need TID 9 for that to develop. No. So uh, in order to, in order to um, make it a donor TID, it has this comment in the but for statement, and that is, um, excess increment to the recipient district, this test cannot be applied in the conventional way. So they had to stretch the meaning of the but for clause to make it a donor district because there was no but for uh, in the in District 9, but they were saying but for District 9, these other kids would not succeed. Right. Which is mm. definitely a stretch and, yeah. I, and you know, it, it, it's like the blight uh, requirement. That, oh, yeah. That, that, you know, like uh, they're tearing down half million dollar new homes in Foxconn and calling them blight because otherwise they that, can't. It's they, basically they can't. a giant tid out there. Yeah, right? that, oh, that's, that's another giant tid out there. Yeah, huge tid. That, that could be, that could be so, a real so it's, problem. So it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> playground for bureaucrats that want to pretend that they're businessmen and investing things when they really aren't, they, other than taxpayers' money, they're, they're, they're learning how I, to I got a it. question, and, and I don't know if we got the answer for it. The Lakeshore Towers, that's at 333 Lake Avenue, the big tall towers that was built, I don't know, maybe about 35 years ago, that is still an active TID. Now, that one's uh, 35 years. For 36 years, it's been in a tit. Well, that couldn't have been the original uh, term. Uh, well, there was, was something somewhere along the line. They got some special got renewed legislation, apparently. What? To what, keep what, it what, what um, there's no time frame. Number on two. These yeah, yeah number there, two. there's always there's always time frame on it. Number two. Well, I'm uh, not going to answer it now. I just want to say, but this is in a, a capture of taxes. So, the citizens of Racine have been paying on that assessed value of the Lakeshore Towers for 35 years. Am I correct? That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so how is that benefiting the community? I mean, the Lakeshore Tower is going to have to obviously has to have uh, some services, and those the garbage is picked up, and I mean all the things that they acquire, and those services now are picked up basically by the the general fund, and the taxes that the tower pays goes into a tid. I, I'm a it's, little bit, it, and it goes into their tid, and that's yeah. where you have to get down and dig out the books. Yeah. Are they okay. a, are they a donor tid? No, I don't think so. I don't know. They got special. I just found it. They had special legislation. How it operates, I don't know. But that's thirty or forty. Almost, we're closing in on forty years for credit loss. Well, if they're not what, taking that, that money that to that donate to another two. tid, number two. two, what is it being spent on in that tid? I don't know. And that's something we got to. But this is the way you talk about tids. Well, this now, this, is now this is real interesting because that the maximum life it's supposed to expire June twenty fourth of this year. Okay. So right. where's okay? It, it was established on June twenty fourth of nineteen eighty three. So that was seventeen. That was a thirty seven year tid. That was the original plan for it to last that, that long. Okay, so let's that's, keep an eye on that one. Plan. That Lakeshore Tower TID, where's that money going to go? Is that going to go back to the general fund? Or are they going to find someplace else to stick that, you know, where you've, you've carried the burden now for 37 years? Well, it should expire. That's what you mean by <laughs> yeah. keeping an eye on it, right? It well, should yeah. expire yeah. and that money it should, should go be back expired. into the general fund. It should fund. come back into the general I'll, fund. I want to show you something on this, on this thing. I'll pull this up again here. Because here, here's what happened in Sturdivant. When Right, right now, the way this is working is the, 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 the Johnson building is not paying this portion of it. 
right. all right? And it said theirs goes into the tit and we pay it. Well, now what happens when you destroy the tit? See, now this money goes back into here and our taxes go down. Correct. Now that's what happened in uh, Sturdivant. They had a really huge tid that it went, it went big, you know, compared to the, the Renaissance. The great, yeah, the Renaissance. It compared to the, the size of the tid and the size of the town, they when they closed that tid down, they got a 16 percent. Did you say a 16 percent reduction in their property taxes? That was big. And there's some places in Wisconsin where it's bigger than that even. So when the tid finally closes. We can all clap yeah. our hands and say, right. "Wow, the money goes down." But here, so, if if it's paying taxes, if it, if well, but like well. like Tid eighteen Machinery Row, they're not going to be collecting any taxes. No, they that. aren't. But but the um, the three thirty three Main is, so right. the, the, the the taxes that is going into their Tid will now go back into the general fund, and. Is that will, and it. and the and at the same time the general fund stays the same, which means they'll be paying more of it, so everybody's taxes will go down a little. Well, bit. Let, me, let me. You said 333 Main. Is that? Right. Are you talking about 330 Lake Avenue? Or? Lake. Yeah. I said 333 yeah. Lake. Yeah. I'm sorry. 330 Lake, Lake Shore Towers. All right. Yeah. yeah. Get get that. Okay. So. Tid two. Yeah. Okay. Here's I think maybe one of the issues that really should be addressed by the Common Council and by their development. Authority or whoever is running it now, um, you really have to take these tids. You have to get a real development. You can't come out here on the uh, uh, what's the Walker site at the Pew Marina. I mean, you've got this land out there. It's been in a tid for how many years? It's it's done virtually almost nothing. And how do you if you have these developments that don't come to Fruition, yeah. Now, Jim, here, 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 here. I, mean, you I, I think I got an answer for you on this. You've all heard of cut your losses short, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, anybody that's an investor, <laughs> particularly in the stock market. It's a lifestyle know, for me. They, well, they, they, <laughs> they know to cut their losses short. You don't chase a bad uh, deal. deal. You, don't, yeah. you don't continue to make it good. Well, when you're dealing with your own money, that's the rule. But with a TID, where you have the people running the TID, are playing it with our money, they will chase a bad deal. In other words, yeah. if the TID isn't working out, well, let's just get money from another TID. It's not our money anyway. Right. This is the taxpayer's money, and we're going to make it work. So here's where I'm going to go again, George. Now, if I just did the, you know, I'm just looking at the years that these TIDs were put into place. We're talking about the 80s, um, 90s, and, you know, those TIDs were fairly successful. I mean, they were not, there were a, a ton of them, but there were some successful ones, including the Lakeshore Towers, which it's extended, apparently. But those are fairly good. after. Well, it was, theoretically, at least they paid for themselves. Right, over exactly. Time. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of tids, but you know what? They actually worked. It took a period of time, and they and they closed, and they actually got back into paying in the general fund. But what I'm saying here, politically, you had uh, mayors during that period of time that I think were more fiscally responsible. I think we lost that when John Dickert came in as mayor. I think since that time on, yeah. I mean, we've had Machinery Rows, we had Porter, we've had Uptown, we got the mall. I mean, we've got uh, uh, the only one maybe is River Bend Lofts, and I think that was actually under Gary Becker. But if you look at some of these, um, you had some fairly, I guess, fiscally responsible representatives. Now they throw a tit out of hell. They're going to they're gonna build God knows what, and they're going to put a tit there. So now we've got neighborhoods that are tits. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just gotten to, to the point where how much of a city you're seeing is going to be a tit. Well, that's interesting. I, I don't know. Have, have you got a map where it shows you the... Know, the I don't have a good map. I try to find a good map on the... On, you know, it's all... You'd be amazed at how much of the land in this in this town is actually part of a TID somewhere or another. It's well, and, and these neighborhood property. TIDs are, are kind of new. I don't think there's any other like that in, in no. your list of things. Yeah. And, and so it's real interesting. Anything mm. in that neighborhood, which is a pretty big neighborhood, you know, the one you when you yeah. live in, any any improvements in there are going to get double taxed. See, and, and the same thing in the South Side TID. Any any improvements there are now going to get double taxed, and we'll just see how it works out for these investors that we have right. over at the city hall that think they're real smart with these tids you know I, I i said before i said you know they're going to make they're going to make it go right they're going to try and make the the tid uh succeed but if it if it's dead and the, you know the reason they stay stagnant that way is because you have the tid there that's supposedly helping the developer out 
But over here, you have people at City Hall, the inspectors and the zoning ordinances and that type of stuff, that make it really, really hard to go in there and do something. So, so they're but, like working against themselves. Let me ask you about this but for clause again. Now, when they, we're talking about the uh, Southside Industrial Park, which is nothing. I mean, it's blank land. Yeah. Now, when that was created, did they say, but for this, the Southside Industrial Park would not be built? Well, there, there's no, it's not an industrial yeah, exactly. park. It's how do you make land. Like, so, yeah. Now, how do you make that a tit, and why was that I know. Spent? Well, it, 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 all I can do is look at the blight but for, you know, yeah. or the blight requirement. You, you, they say, well, you cannot establish a tit unless there's blight, or you can't, you can't go and confiscate property. Uh, well, under, does remediation under, to, to count as new construction is what I'm wondering, because I, I guess they remediated the land. I mean, it was an old industrial site. It was like right. where Jacobson that was. was. That was the old Jacobson Yeah, site. so, I mean, was there things there that needed to be cleaned up environmentally or something? And that's, I think that's there what the new there construction would have, was? There would have been in that, in, I understand, you know, the way the manufacturing was there in the old days, they might have just let this, the grease and oil and stuff, whatever was produced in the factory, seep into the just ground. seep into the ground. Uh, I had heard there were some environmental problems there, and, and my, you know, my feelings were, well, if that makes it impossible to build on that, well, then we should do something about it. Maybe that's what the TID was there for, to say that uh, we would. You so know, you, so you're, gonna, you really, you're kind of puzzled the way I am. You know, what, without without digging out those TID papers, when you bring up a specific TID, yeah, and and this is this is what uh, I think I, we need to find out how we you know can find. It. I found. The specifics for TID 23, it's all there. It's got every single property that's involved, every single penny the way it's going to be spent, and what it's for. So we have that information on TID 23. But we need to find it on these other, other to find out what the heck's going on because we have them all over town. We can see how expensive they are and why aren't they developing. And I don't think it's because for lack of a TID. I think it's because we have these obstructions in the way of starting a business you know, in the way well, of Well, you've got a reputation, George. I mean, there's a reputation out there that we're seen as difficult to deal with. And well, look, with look at the one that, did, well, more than reputation, the guy, remember, he, he yeah. wanted to start up that, that place on, on Clark Street. Right. And, and well, well, he was just relocating. He was relocating. From, he, wasn't, yeah. he didn't ask for a TID, didn't ask for any money. What do we do? Beat the Kicked hell out of all his tenants, you know, tell them, tell them they were all operating there illegally. But here's the other thing, you know, those <laughs> TIDs, when they were originally put in, they were for actually uh, uh, areas that were depressed. They were economically depressed, and they thought, well, we'll start up an area, we'll, we'll give a TID, which will attract business to certain areas, uh, economically depressed areas. Well, what happened was now there's TIDs out in Oconomowoc and, and uh, Delafield, and, you know, so these TIDs morphed themselves into these communities, well, I, I, and now yeah. it's a it's a economic... Uh, it's a way to get around Act 10 and double t it, uh, the yep. properties are double taxed. It's a way to increase taxes. And Racine is just probably the worst. I mean, you look at somebody's outlying here. Now, Foxconn may actually they may actually take take the top uh, seat because that's, that that's could Mount be Pleasant. Ever. I better watch that because yeah. that is a way for Mount Pleasant board. To really jack up taxes, because imagine all that the double tax, you know, all the increase in the in the levy going up that Foxconn doesn't pay. Foxconn, what Foxconn pays goes into their TID, and to the residents of Mount Pleasant pay the taxes that Foxconn isn't paying. Yeah, that could be really big. Yeah, for that could be a that could really that that really could catch good. them up with our tax rate. Yeah, oh yeah, easily. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I would like to give them. Uh, Kind of a, a more endearing name, you know. You call them a tid, but I, you know, we could make it a titty. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like a I, titty so, bear. <laughs> so Fox kind of is just a big giant titty. <laughs> Maybe we ought to close the show on that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope that this, some of this has made sense to you. It's uh, it's been a long journey for us to get a real grip on what is going on here. But the bottom line is. These TIDs typically, at least the ones that we've got in town here, do not produce the kind of um, wealth that they're projected to produce. You know, I, I, I don't want to extend out this program too long, but I tell yeah. you what, folks, there's another thing we need to understand about TIDs. They're totally under the control of the council. If the council decides they want to close the TID, they can close it. Yep. So yep. We, have, we have a bunch of aldermen in there that are sitting there watching this, watching the 
things go by yeah. without participating in it and, and doing something about it. And, and, and one of their jobs is to understand it. And by the way, I went before them and I, and I did tell them that, that, you know, if they, they can't just say, well, I didn't know any better. That's not good enough. It's in your handbook. You learn. You need to learn about TIDS. The Aldermen need to learn about TIDS so that they can do something about it because something can be done about it. All right, sorry for that little interjection. No, 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 that's show, fine, but, George. But that We can still say, have a good day and we'll see you next week. All right. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for being here.